So the idea of a, a community bank, a community development, is, um, is such a powerful one. Uh, t tell us a little bit about the obstacles you have to overcome in, in, in Kenya. And, um, uh, or uh, are there political issues? Are there competing organizations? What, what's, the, what's the lay of the land? So right uh, now, the, 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 uh, we don't have much of the political issues so far because I have not shown interest in politics and I don't do my work for politics. I do it because I believe in it and that's something that I mean, I believe in so much. And another thing is that there's no, the competition is that I think we are the only grass organization that came from the grassroots, from, the, you know, from down to up, you know. And um, I think um, we are in a very unique place. At the same time, I was born in Kibera, grew up in Kibera. Not enough, I went to West Yard. <laughs> So that gave me a big bargaining power. You know, yeah. I'm educated despite my... You can sort of go between... Yeah, I can go between yes. two lines. The yes. Yes. Donut and the world, the community, the grassroots community. I don't mean, so that has helped us uh, uh, a lot. The, uh, the, 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 the challenge is that maybe some people might perceive me to be political leader. You know what I mean? That can be a challenge that I'm yes. seeing hard for some people. Thinking that way, you know what I mean? Because there's a few people who really do something from their heart, you know? Yeah. So, so that's the thing, yeah. And uh, what's another challenge you face? <laughs> another challenge we're facing now, we're like, it's a big challenge. We are, we are not big, that big, and we are not that small. Right. And I think that's the place of every company or any nonprofit we face. We have, we have been able to lack it with the media a lot, and that put us up, <laughs> but even our budget is still small. For so example, I go to a foundation and be like, oh, Kennedy, you guys look big, but you're still small because of your budget. When you get bigger, you come for money. <laughs> well, like, no, for example, like the Gates Foundation gives like, like $5 million, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, for example, Gates so we can apply. They're like, ah, they look for us because of the media. Yeah. They, and then they find us like, too small. Too small. <laughs> but so that's a challenge. I, I know that. <laughs> I think we had another challenge. Yes. We've grown so quickly. It's yeah, yeah, we've grown four so. years ago, you know, we were nothing. We were tiny. And yeah. now we have like over 124 employees. And so, yeah, so I think that's also a challenge to manage. And I know that there are people who are interested in taking the model you have in Kibera and trying to scale it in other places and to use it in other places. Um, and I, I guess that is. Um, a danger of your early success is that you've grown quickly and, and yeah. that um, people are trying to imitate your model, which is a, a good thing, but I guess at the same time, you are, you're so grounded in Kibera, you have local knowledge and local support, which might not be the case if you just started a school in another country. Is this, is this one of the things you talk about in the organization? Absolutely. I think we talk a lot about what does scaling look like for us and sort of part of our success is I think we can be talked about but it's from you know the bottom up and that the ownership and the commitment to success comes so deeply from the community in which we work and so actually though we're at an exciting point we're about to go to our second community in Kenya uh -huh. so we're going uh -huh. um, to expand in the next few weeks um, to the Mathari slum oh, really? which is really? yeah, the second. second largest slum in Nairobi it's about 800,000 people so uh, uh, the second largest slum in Kenya and how actually that happened is a group of young people reached out to Kennedy and said mm -hmm. you know, we see what you've done we've heard your story how do we do that and so for about two years, we've just worked with them, building sort of technical capacity, lending them our staff to mm -hmm. do training, but they've been completely self-funding what they've done. So they've really demonstrated a deep commitment. And now at this point where we've been working together for a while and working with our board and other people have decided that we're ready to build a school for girls and then we'll connect it to the services that are the most valuable in Mithari, which might be different yeah. from what we've done in Kibera. And, and when you're out on the road raising money and raising awareness uh, of the issues that you're addressing, what are the most effective things that you find to get other people to care? Uh, in other words, they don't maybe, people who are not living in, in Kenya, but who might be interested in your work, 
I know you're, much, you're in the media uh, very successfully and, and in very, very powerfully. Um, what do you find works as you build support for, the, for your programs? Having people to be interested. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good question. Is that, well, what's happening is that the issue is that you have to be honest to yourself on what you believe in. You know, don't do something that you don't believe in, okay? And I think whatever is happening, the people, so people see the passion that we have on what we're doing, you know? And it's that I have, a, for example, I have many opportunities in my life. I can do other things, but I, I chose thanks to Wesley that now I can choose what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> before I didn't have choice, you know? But I know I feel like this is something that I love, and people will see that passion. You know, you have to be passionate first before you consider other people. So people are watching and they can see what is really this thing is these people really believe in this work, you know. And the other thing is that you also have to, what has helped me a lot is to look for smart people. Work with people who are really willing. In Kibera, I have the smartest people in Kibera. In the American office, I have Lexi and other people who are really putting their work, their hands dirty, you know what I mean? And it's not about one person. It's not about Jessica. It's not about Kennedy. You know, it is about the cause. I mean, I mean, people, when the people, when people can see that, they can really they open their heart for it. You know what I mean? And I want to tell people that's the most important thing. Be passionate, believe in your cause, and it will transform for other people. I think also like people are interested, especially like in this day and age, in impact and accountability. Yes. And I think what Shopko has done that is different than a lot of organizations, and we have invested significantly in sort of our, our evaluation infrastructure. So actually, everyone who uses our services, do you have them on you? Um, I wish we had one. uses an ID card that has a scannable barcode. And so when they first register, we do a sort of initial survey, we see where they're at. And then over time, anytime you go to the library or the clinic, you scan it with your barcode. Huh. And so there's a uh -huh. level of transparency and accountability, and we're also able to, to demonstrate impact in a way that people can actually see that if they're involved and they're invested, this is what they've done and this is the result. Um, so I think that's one part of it is just mm -hmm. really investing in that. And I think another part is just storytelling that you yeah. know people yeah. connect to other people and you know making it personal, like Kennedy said, and sharing why we're both interested and we both have very different reasons that we're here and that we're passionate about this. And I think other people connect to that too. And people want to be part of something that's moving forward and that's gaining momentum and that's actually you know doing what it says it's doing. So in, in this class, uh, we it's a f six weeks long, uh, and we're learning about uh, organizations that fight extreme poverty. We're learning about organizations that are dealing with climate change. We've been talking about organizations that uh, deal with uh, global health issues and deal with questions of education uh, uh, and the lack uh, of education. Um, Thousands of the students in this class, most of them outside the United States, we think, are looking for ways to make a positive difference. Um, you two have been so engaged in doing just that. I wonder if you have advice for uh, the students who will be watching this video of, you know, of, they'll be from all ages, from 15 to 85 probably. What should they, how can they get involved to be part of a movement that's going forward? There's been a disease of the of big founder. <laughs> so not everyone will found organization. No. There are organizations that are doing amazing work that you believe in, that you can also be part of it. Unless you have a special idea that's unique that you think you can put forward, you know? And it will be easy. You have to really you have to really believe in the course. No, you have to identify, you have to know yourself better. What do you want? Yeah. Why are you climate change? Is what is the connection? For example, Kibera for me, I feel is part of my life. I grew up in poverty. Jessica connection to it is as Jessica came to Kibera when we were working together. You know, she kind of she saw this thing firsthand. You know what I mean? So she also has a story to connect with. You know what I mean? And everybody must have, find a way, you know, of why they are doing that. Ask us, you know, because I think the global the world is such a big place. You have to find your small part. Yeah. They know that. You cannot deal wrong, you know, in one day. I mean, just know that the little thing you are doing has an impact. And most of the time nowadays, the world is confused with the scalability, changing thousands of people's lives. 
But I truly believe that it's one as a time. Yeah. If I help that girl on the street of Kibera, who will be the future leader, because we have seen her potential, we have seen what she's passing through. For me, that's also big. You know I mean? So just don't get tired that you're not doing that big. Start small and grow. Yeah, I think that there's so much buzz about our social entrepreneurship, but not enough about social entrepreneurship. Hmm. And I think that there is such a, an ability to, you don't have to, like Kennedy said, start an organization. We didn't even really plan on starting an organization. So I think that it sort of comes from what Kennedy said, what you're passionate about and what you feel urgently compelled to act on. And that might be around the world. It might be what we're doing. It might be something in your own backyard. Right. And right. there's so many ways to do that. You know, there's ways to volunteer. There's yeah. ways to raise small amounts of money that go incredibly far. There are ways to, you know, let people know, make a presentation in your school about an issue that mm -hmm. people might not be aware of. And so I think there's so many different ways, big and small, um, to become a part of something. There is many ways of changing the world. For example, I remember spending four years at Wesley University. I was taught by professors, you know, who really helped me to be who I am, you know? And they're not in the industry of NGO. I mean, so everybody, can change the world in a different way. It can be through business. You can be that doctor who cares about the patient. Yes. You can be that lawyer who cares about people with their rights that they violated. I mean, so that's how I see the world. Yeah. 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 Well, you certainly have made an extraordinarily positive difference uh, in Kybera, and I know have inspired people around the world with your work. And uh, I'm confident it will inspire uh, the many people in this class uh, to find ways to get involved, to raise awareness, to help raise funds, um, uh, to make a difference either in their own backyards or um, across the globe. So Jessica Kennedy, thank you very much for having this conversation with me. Say hello to the beautiful girls of the Kibera School. They're so adorable. We'll make available on the website the video, uh, uh, music video, so our students can see some of the things you're doing. And um, again, thank you for being part of this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. No matter which direction you'll be sure to go for. This is our first step as we get an education. This nation won't stop us from the push of limitation. Today we learn to write and read. Someday we bloom as flowers, now we plant the seed. Sassy walking, always talking, better listen to what's said. These girls are leaders, they are not going to be led. Watch them sing and dance and the swag they bring. You will not be surprised they can do anything. The only six and seven they can show you how. Someday they'll look back and say, That was then and I this know is I now. Can. Be what I wanna be. Be what I wanna be. If I work hard in it, if I work hard on it, I'll be where I wanna be. I'll be where I wanna be. I know I can. I know I can. Be what I wanna be. Be what I wanna be. If I work hard in it, if I work hard on it, I'll be where I wanna be. I'll be where I wanna be. Kibera School for Girls. Let's look ahead. We ask them what they want to be, and this is what they said. Jen will be a pilot. Jen on the plane. Lensa is the teacher who will keep you sane. Making lots of money will be Ben Kambibe. Alvin as a daughter should be saving the day. Selma the lawyer don't get on her bad side. Vanessa is the dentist so often white. You don't have to hide, time will pass, you will grow. And the future is yours although you don't know. What you gonna be or where you will go. Let me tell you something from the bottom of my heart. This is not your whole life, no, just a part. Kibera School for Girls, this is only the start. Come on, only your dreamers, it's the future, not a wish. Girls, join together, say it like this. I know I can, I know I can, be what I wanna be. Be what I wanna be, if 
If I work hard in it, I'll be where I wanna be. I'll be where I wanna be. I know I can. I know I can. Be what I wanna be. Be what I wanna be. If I work hard in it, I'll be where I wanna be. I'll be where I wanna be. Hey, what's up? This is KND. Proud to be part of the community. You better school for girls, yeah, I believe. If we bend together, we can't achieve anything and everything with education. One day you will be part of the nation. Life is hard, but we'll get through. I have so much hope and in all of you. And though you can move mountains alone, if we work together, it can get done. It's not just here, you will cause improvement. It's not just a school, it's a whole movement. If I can make it, then you can too. The world should look out what you'll do. Cause ahead of me, I want you all to run. My hopes not that it's shining like the sun. So rise and shine and we will see. Love and empowerment, that's the key. Don't run, come fast, yeah, change it slow. If you have a dream, just never say no. Let's say it together, we believe. In shining hope for communities. To change the world, if there's a will, there's a way. Let's all hold hands, cause the future starts today. I know I can. I know I can. Be where I wanna be. Be where I wanna be. If I work out on it. If I work out on it. I'll be where I wanna be. I'll be where I wanna be. I know I can. I know I can. Be where I wanna be. Be where I wanna be. If I work out on it. If I work out on it. I'll be where I wanna be. I'll be where I wanna be. Yo, Kibera, Kupa Moja. So I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the ways that social scientists have found that we can change incentive structures in families and in neighborhoods and even in, in regions. I've, I've mentioned a little bit about scholarships, and I'll talk about that uh, t uh, in, in a couple of minutes. But there, there are ways, and you see this in the report um, from the Poverty Action Lab on adolescent girls, you see that there are ways in which um, you can begin to change the expectations that families have about girls um, uh, through um, uh, kind of force in some ways. But then once you've done that, the changes seem to uh, take root. Uh, I, I'm speaking too abstractly and too confusingly. Let me try to be clearer. An uh, example would be um, there are uh, uh, countries, uh, many countries in the world, establish quotas. You have to, if you have elected officials, a certain percentage of them have to be uh, women. Um, and uh, at first, these are met with some resistance in many places. But after the quota exists for a while and women assume leadership positions and do the work that political leaders do, the the quotas are no longer necessary. In other words, the expectation changes that women can be leaders, women can get the job done, and actually you then you don't need quotas for, um, uh, uh, for people to elect women into leadership positions. What that shows is that you can change habits with new incentives or new uh, controls like a quota system or a cash payment system, um, but once the performance of the women in education, in government, uh, in business, once that ha takes root, you can remove the, uh, the, the, the cash incentives or the quotas and people's expectations for what women can do have changed and women's expectations for what they can do and what they must demand to protect their uh, uh, ways of life, that has changed. It no longer needs the intervention uh, uh, of uh, quotas or cash incentives. So let's talk a little bit about the Poverty Action Lab's work in changing the incentives. In your reading, is discussed an experiment by uh, Robert uh, Jensen, and, and he was interested in what happens when families become aware that women can hold high-paying jobs. Um, once they understand that the girl that they are taking care of can actually grow up to be somebody who's going to earn a significant amount of money, it seems from Jensen's experiment that they begin to value girls differently. They will invest in their girls because the girls will not only sustain themselves economically but contribute to the well-being of the families. When uh, Jensen's study shows that families kept girls in school longer and girls seem to have better, better health and nutrition uh, because uh, the expectation of the family changed that, yes, my daughter is not just going to be a 
a drag on my family's household economic situation. But my daughter is actually, if I give her proper schooling, if I give her proper health care, she will be able to earn uh, a significant amount of money and be able to take care of us uh, later on. So the incentives um, uh, change and uh, investment in girls uh, changes. This is a quote from uh, your reading from uh, Jasmine Shah. While deeper social and cultural factors may be responsible for women's low status, some parents are not investing in their daughters because they do not see an economic value in doing so. And so Jasmine Shah and Jensen and uh, uh, others uh, uh, in this uh, uh, doing randomized controlled trials, they're interested in providing economic value uh, to, to uh, girls, thereby changing the expectations that fathers and mothers have about girls that will then become a virtuous circle. They think of the family as making rational decisions about which child to care for, because which child is going to be give me a better return on my investment. The boy is going to do that traditionally. But if I can make the girl do that by providing the family with cash for sending her to school or showing more and more examples of women uh, earning uh, uh, significant salaries, then I change the incentive structure in the family. This really does assume that the families are uh, caring less for girls, not just because of deep cultural factors, but because of straightforward uh, economic decision making. The work of many social scientists uh, today is trying to convince families that taking care of girls is a rational economic decision. The other text that you've been assigned uh, for this week um, really takes a very different uh, approach uh, uh, to this question. It's not incompatible with changing the incentives approach, but it really takes a more uh, philosophical uh, approach uh, that is a, 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 a broader one. Uh, this is the work of Martha Nussbaum that I've asked you to look at, much influenced by Amartya Sen uh, and, and others, and she, she points it, puts herself in an Aristotelian tradition. Martha Nussbaum sees herself as um, uh, operating in a kind of liberal Aristotelian uh, tradition, she's interested in identifying cross-culturally what um, human capabilities uh, are, um, and she lists 10 of them in, in the reading uh, for this week with, with some subdivisions, um, and how uh, uh, it is a violation of, uh, of human dignity um, that's, that some people, and many of them girls uh, and women, some people are not allowed to have their human capacities flourish. She's not interested so much in changing the incentives, but in changing the mindset, the cultural approach we take to thinking about gender bias, to thinking about uh, uh, gender discrimination uh, as a violation of human uh, dignity. Um, the common realities of women, um, especially in the developed world, it are, are violations of basic human dignity, uh, of, uh, of the ability uh, to uh, flourish. This, of course, I mean, Martha Nussbaum knows this, it, it lowers economic growth, it, it erodes human capital, um, but she wants to, to think of this more broadly than that. Uh, and I quote her here, uh, she says that all too often women are not treated as ends in their own right, persons with a dignity that deserves respect from laws and institutions. Instead, women are treated as mere instruments of the ends of others. They're treated as reproducers, caregivers, sexual outlets, or agents of a family's general prosperity. And Nussbaum thinks that we can't treat any person as simply a means to something else. We should treat them as ends in themselves. Notice the difference from our Poverty Action Lab folks and the social scientists who are trying to actually change the way uh, a person thinks of the girl as a means, you know, as a, as a, um, as a vehicle for prosperity. 
Nussbaum says, no, we don't want to treat anybody as just a vehicle for prosperity. We don't want to treat anybody as, a, as an investment for ourselves. We want to treat them with dig dignity that deserves respect from law and institutions um, and uh, 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 as, as individuals uh, who have um, um, uh, the capacity for uh, happiness, for a capacity for pleasure, a capacity for learning, uh, for interacting with others and other things she identifies. And denying or cutting off that capacity um, is um, a violation of basic uh, human rights, a violation of our own uh, humanity. Um, and so for Nussbaum, she wants us to think not just about economic development, but about human development. And she writes uh, in conclusion that women lack essential support for leading lives, leading lives that are fully human. This lack of support is frequently caused uh, just by their being women. And this should offend our political, moral, religious um, uh, sense of the world. We should not want to live in a world where in order to get basic respect and dignity, you have to be able to make more money for your family. We want to live in a world, uh, Nussbaum urges, where we identify capabilities um, uh, that all human beings share, and we ensure that people have the opportunity to exercise their capacities to uh, flourish, a word she uses in other books, to flourish in the world. So uh, we have here um, a, 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 a one commonality that, uh, between the social scientist and the philosopher. That commonality is that uh, women are suffering differentially. They're suffering much more than men. And, and second, that ad identifying the sources of that suffering and fixing it um, uh, have widespread reverberations uh, across the globe. That, that are all of our uh, um, authors this week have in common. But what Nussbaum wants to do uh, beyond just changing the incentives um, is to identify what it means um, to uh, exercise our humanity and to energize us to create social movements, uh, to create educational structures and social structures and economic structures through which we help others around the world exercise their human capabilities.